Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people, and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by leading the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the lands of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain that, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beoth Beor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigour had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequalled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of Israel. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I just have to say uh, my compliments, William, on getting nailing all of those names. Uh, it's, it's not easy to do, especially in that fake British accent. <laughs> Our psalm for today is Psalm number 90, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 17. We'll say it responsibly by the half verse. Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were brought forth, where the land and the earth were born. You turn us back to the dust and say, For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. You sweep us away like a dream. In the morning it is green and flourishes. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you have afflicted us. Show your servants your works. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Eternal Father of our mortal race, in Jesus Christ your grace has come upon us for his sake. Prosper the work of our hands until he returns to gladden our hearts forever. Amen. Amen.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks. Jesus said to him, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. And Jesus said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? And no one was able to give him an answer. And nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. sermon time. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I got a nice picture of everything going there. And William, I'm sorry for, I, William is so good natured. I, I always tease you because I'm jealous of your voice. Mine sounds like an old pro from, uh, anyway. There it is. It's jealousy. Um, I have, I have a, a few laws I want to read out to you. Now these are current as of 2018. And these are actual laws that exist across the country. So, um, <clears throat> when a skim is that how you pronounce it? Wet a skim in uh, Alberta? God bless people in that town. I, I'm sorry, I, I butchered that. But apparently ice skating on the road in that town is illegal. And will cost you $78 if you do it. In Red Deer, Alberta, you are allowed legally to tease any animal that you want, but not a cat when it's caught in a trap. It's a $510 fine. I, it's, what I get a kick out of is not $500 or $450 or $550. It's $510. Dollars. <laughs> Victoria, B.C. I love this one. I love this one. How many people here have Scottish heritage? You love bagpipe music? Okay, don't go to Victoria, B.C. because in Victoria, two bagpipers can't play on the city streets at the same time. <laughs> and also in Victoria, balloon artists cannot demand payment for their work. Never been harassed by a balloon artist, but anyway, there it is. Calgary. Against the law to do anything which is likely to draw a crowd. <laughs> and in Halifax, and, and God knows why this one was drawn up, in Halifax, taxi drivers have to keep a high standard of personal hygiene. <laughs> um, strange laws, but I'm going to tell you, let's just say the bagpiper one. I'm, I'm going to guess, I have no idea when it was written up, but let's just say it was written up 10 years ago, 2010. Right? What do you guarantee happened in 2008, 2009? Bagpipers took to the streets in droves during some sort of demonstration or some sort of effusive Scottish celebration and annoyed tons of people with their bagpipe music. And so they passed an ordinance to get rid of it. You can tell by laws when they were passed that before that there was some sort of abuse that had gone on. What ordinance, law, what, what commandment does Jesus give us? Love our neighbor as ourself. What does that tell you about Jesus having to tell us that? Quite often, your neighbor is a jerk. <laughs> and you have to be told to overlook that. Why? Because we're jerks too, sometimes. Do you realize that everybody in this room, and there's some really really good people in this room. I can't speak to the rest of you, but there's some really good people <laughs> sitting here right now. But I want you to consider, if you've lived a life longer than 40, 50 years, there's people out there who don't like you. You are likely, whether you know it or not, somebody's bad guy. Like, they would say that, you know, who's the worst person in the world, Shirley Lambert. She just makes quilts constantly. There's quilts and paintings everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> but you're, you're somebody's bad guy. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
we, we have to realize we, we, we've all sinned, whether they're small or large, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and so when we're ad admonished to love our neighbors ourselves, this way, see, the reason Christ said this in the presence and while he's talking to Pharisees and before that Sadducees was the law that, that Moses gave, the lawgivers and the judges. The, the laws that they had given the people weren't working. Why? Because they became more and more legalistic about the law. The law ended up being something that the people served. It wasn't that the law was serving the people. And Jesus had to say, you need to love your neighbors. In other words, you need to look at all of these things in the spirit in which God gave them to us. And that was so that we could more perfectly love each other. And others could love us. And, and the reason all these foolish laws I just listed were drawn up in Canada is because people weren't abiding by certain rules that others assumed they would be. And so they had to pass these silly laws. Somebody ice skating on the street sounds ridiculous, but I can guarantee you somebody was ice skating on the street, went out in front of a car, and got hit during an ice storm. And somebody had to say, look, we, we got to protect people. And so they had to tell them, no ice skating on the road. Jesus had to say, as basic as it sounds, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. We have to, and this is what the other two readings speak to, we have to die to the world and to a certain extent, the pull that we have, selfishness that we have. Moses, who can compare themselves to Moses? Moses was ancient by the time he got to the edge of the Holy Land. And he wasn't allowed to go in. He was allowed to see it, but he wasn't allowed to go in. Why? Because God was punishing him? Not because God was punishing him. Because Moses, the context in which he grew up and led the people was entirely different from the context that the people needed to live in, in the, the promised land. The generation had to die off. Why 40 years? It's two generations. This sounds awful. Like, and I'm there with you, right? I mean, well into middle age myself, right? And you think to yourself, well, we don't want to lose the good things from the past. Obviously, we don't. We, you carry those things forward. But you need to drop the things from the past that weren't useful and that held us back. You can't live in paradise, in other words, if you bring that slave mentality. And the slavery here being talked about is a slave to sin, a slave to the will of the world. And it's very alluring. And you know what? You'll never get rid of that tension that we live in. That certain things about the world are incredibly alluring. And, and, and in a short time, great. Why, why do we have laws against hard drugs? Because hard drugs suck. I'm being serious now. When you take heroin, do you feel awful right away? No. Apparently, you feel fantastic. And the very next, as soon as you come down from that, all you can think about is, now I need to take heroin again. It's because of things that are alluring to us, but ultimately destroy us. And spiritually, this is what's being talked about constantly. Who had a hard time being a Christian? Paul. When you look at you can feel, you can feel fatigue and sadness in this letter to the Thessalonians. Now remember, Paul almost always wrote backwards to communities that he founded and left, and he moved on. And then he heard about troubles, and he would write letters back giving advice. And here he's writing to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God. But we were gentle among you, he goes on, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children, so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves. Because you have become very dear to us. When we, when we deliver the message of the gospel, we deliver ourselves. 
with it. With it, you're always putting yourself on the line. <clears throat> Along with the gospel. Because living the gospel, hearing the news of the gospel and having that live in your hearts is the easy part. Living it out is always a tension. Always a tension. Always difficult for us. Gloriously difficult. But it is difficult nonetheless. We're tempted by the world that we live in, that we must live in, and we always have to have one foot in. But we're always meant to look forward into the promised land constantly, even though we can't get there ourselves, not in this life. We're always on that edge like Moses was, seeing what was behind and realizing what's in front of us and leading others to cross over the River Jordan. It's a glorious work, but it is difficult. And we need to keep that focus. It was difficult for Paul. It was difficult for Moses. But look at the glory and what we gain from it. Loving our neighbor as ourself is a difficult thing. It is a difficult thing. Because sometimes our neighbor is difficult. And sometimes we, whether we know it or not, and often you don't know it, you're difficult yourself. So as we go forward, coming towards All Saints Day, Keep in your prayers that, that constant admonition, Lord, help me to live and to love my neighbor as myself. Let us give thanks to God our Father, always and for everything, saying, we thank you, Lord, for the beauty of, and wonder of creation. Thank you, Lord. In this we pray for our, the other churches in our community, in particular we pray for Community Bible Church. You would bless their leaders and their congregation. And in our deanery, we pray for St. John's Richmond. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food, our homes, and families and friends, we thank you, Lord. In the world, we pray for countries who are going into an election, particularly the United States and Tanzania and the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, we also pray for a resolution to the fishery dispute in Nova Scotia and to the dispute in Caledonia over housing development. For minds to think and hearts to love, yeah. we thank you, Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play, we yeah. thank you, Lord. For those who are brave and courageous, patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity, Thank you, Lord. For all who pursue peace, justice, and truth. Thank you, Lord. For all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ. Thank you, Lord. This week in our parish, we pray for Sean, Julie, Jason, Brian, and Mary. Pray for the sick and those in need of healing. Michael, Peter, Peter, Diane, Laura, Heather, and John. For these and all prayers, we thank you, Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. To the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Let us pray. God of constant love, you have guided your people in all times and ages. May we who offer you our praise today always be ready to follow where you lead. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, He stretched out His hands in suffering to bring release to those who placed their hope in you, and so He won for you a holy people. <clears throat> He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows, and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death, and to banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, pardon me, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The response to the breaking of the bread is, So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God, our God, you have fed us with bread from heaven as you fed the people of Israel. May we who have been inwardly nourished be ready to follow you all our days. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, so St. Thomas has uh, started a fellowship team. Um, and you may have noticed that we are doing a, a virtual pumpkin carving contest this week. Uh, so for more information, please reach out to the office. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a, a, a fun event. Um, you may have noticed that we do have a, a number of leaves on the lawn at this point, so uh, the fall yard cleanup will take place uh, next Saturday, October 31st, from 9 until noon, weather permitting. Uh, and this is not official, but I'm unofficially saying for anyone who comes out that wants to wear a costume, that would be super fun. Um, I may come dressed as a ballerina, I'm not saying I will. <laughs> and, uh, uh, our St. Thomas fundraising team has partnered with the Snowflake Bazaar Committee and are launching, launch, launching, launching our first Unbazaar. Uh, order forms are due to the church on or before November 8th. Uh, if you'd like a printed form, uh, please talk to Nicole or contact the office. Uh, also, just a note that all of our raspberry pies have been sold. Uh, please contact the office uh, if you're looking to get a copy of either Our Daily Bread or Forward Day by Day in either small or large font. Um, I think that's it. Um, again, if you have any uh, questions or comments or anything, uh, please feel free to reach out either to the office or to Dave or I at Wardens, uh, and we'll be happy to, uh, to get back in contact with you. Have a good week. Uh, thank you. Fun script orders are due next week. Order <laughs> your Christmas gift cards. Oh, yeah, it's, sorry, it's not on here, but very, very good point. So, fun script uh, retake. Uh, just a reminder um, that uh, as we get closer to the Christmas season, uh, we know it's going to be hard uh, with shipping and everything to get things on time. Uh, so, just a, a plug to uh, order your Christmas gift cards uh, through Fun Ship fun script program as soon as possible. Uh, the order is due next week um, and it is a good way to support the church as well as um, if, we're pl uh, if you're planning on, on giving to sort of any other process or, or through the, the uh, angel tree or anything like that, uh, then having the gift cards is, uh, is a good way to do it uh, right now. So uh, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Have a good week again. Just a quick apology. Oh, sorry. Yes, no, I just wanted to say that somebody has a birthday tomorrow, so happy birthday to Shirley and Amber and Phoebe. Oh, yeah. face in you, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve our risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.